Chaksur Militandina Tesmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvise Shashanyavadi Paschacha Deshatarine Vanchakaupa Tarubhyasya Kripa Sindhu Bhayevata Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Recording in progress Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shiva Sadigor Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare So we're recounting the pastimes of Lord Krishna as described in the Krishna book the supreme personality of Godhead now we're on chapter number 44, the killing of Kamsa. So Lord Krishna had been brought to Mathura and Kamsa had arranged a wrestling match for Lord Krishna. So the wrestlers who had who were arranged to fight Lord Krishna, they were much stronger looking and much bigger and much more powerful built than Krishna and Balaram. Krishna and Balaram were just young boys and so their bodies were they, they were not so tall and they were not they didn't have big muscles and their bodies were soft and when they, they, they came into the wrestling arena and they, the rest and Krishna spoke to the wrestlers and told them he said you know we're just young boys but the wrestlers said oh come on we know you're very strong you just killed that big elephant so they said that elephant was powerful as 10,000 elephants, but you killed it so easily. So the Kamsas, these, these wrestlers had been arranged by Kamsa and so they told Krishna, you know, we should fight. They didn't tell Krishna and Balaram, we're not going to fight you, you're just little boys. They said, no, we should fight you, you should fight us. So it was arranged Krishna would fight the wrestler Chanura and Lord Balaram would f fight the wrestler Mustika. <laughs> this is the jackals outside. <laughs> so, so the, the two of Krishna and Chanura 
but they lock their arms together and they put their palms together and the hand to hand and leg to leg and they begin to press against each other. And they, as they, sometimes they would hit each other. And they tried to push each other from one place to another. Sometimes one one of the, sometimes that they would one person would capture the other one and we'd throw them on the ground. And sometimes one would rush from he would hide behind the back and then rush to the front and then he would try to grab him. So they were dragging and pushing and there were arms were their head their hands were locked together. Each person tried to defeat the other. They were all very expert in wrestling. But the people in the, who were watching, there was a big audience, all the people had come from, some had come from Vrindavan and some had come from Mathura, many from Mathura, and uh, there were many people there watching. They were not satisfied because they thought, this doesn't seem fair. Krishna and Balaram are just boys, but these wrestlers, Chanura and Mustika, they're the strongest people and they're as solid as stone. So, there were many ladies in the audience. The ladies actually, they're from Mathura, and that they, they also began to talk and they said, Oh, this it's not fair. They said, there's no justice here. It just didn't, it's just not right. And we're, they're doing it, they're, my, they're wrestling in front of the king. So the ladies, they, they did not enjoy it. They, they said, we cannot enjoy watching this fight. If people are going to fight each other, they should be equal. But this is a fight between the strong and the weak. Those two wrestlers, Mustika and Chanura, are as strong as mountains. They're like thunderbolts. But Krishna and Balaram, they're just boys and they're not, they're not even very, they're not very grown up. They, their bodies are very soft and tender. Krishna 
So whoever arranged this fight, they didn't do a good job. It's not justice. Anybody who knows about justice, they won't stay to watch this fight. And people who are watching this wrestling match, they cannot be very enlightened. It doesn't matter if they speak or if they just stay silent. They're they're, 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 they're going to get sinful reactions because they're encouraging this fight, which is not fair. So these ladies of Mathura, they were compassionate and they were feeling sorry for Krishna and Balaram that they had to fight these big powerful wrestlers. But one of the ladies, one of the ladies said, oh, she said, my, she said to the other lady, she said, just look at the face of Krishna. She said, there, there's drops of perspiration, He's sweating on his face, drops of, pers drops of water running down his face from sweat because he's chasing his enemy. His face looks just like a lotus flower with drops of water. She was appreciating Krishna's beautiful face. And then another lady said, Look at the face of Lord Balaram. It's very beautiful. Usually his face is white. He has a white colored skin. But because he's wrestling, so he's got a reddish hue on his face. Yeah, when you do something strenuous like fighting a wrestling match, then you use up a lot of energy and it causes the red color to appear in the face. So she was appreciating how Balaram, Lord Balaram looked so beautiful. Then, then another lady said to her friends, she said, just think how, how, how lucky is the people in Vrindavan where Lord Krishna himself is always present. Uh, 
He's all, when he's in Vrindavan, he's always decorated with flower garlands and he's always taking care of the cows along with his brother, Balra. And at that time, Krishna will play on his flute, play the most beautiful sounds from his flute to call the cows. And he's all Krishna's with the company of all the cowherd boys. So these residents of Vrindavan are so fortunate to be able to see the lotus feet of Krishna and Balaram all the time. Those lotus feet of Krishna and Balaram are worshipped even by Lord Shiva and by the goddess of fortune. We cannot understand how many pious activities the people, these ladies of Vrindavan must have done. And be because of their pious activities, they're able to enjoy the beauty of Krishna. There is nobody anywhere who can compare to the beauty of Krishna. Nobody is higher and nobody is equal to him. He has the most beautiful complexion and the luster of his body is so attractive. So Krishna and Balaram have all kinds of opulence. They, pos they possess wealth, strength, beauty, fame, knowledge, and renunciation. These are, these are the six opulences. Usually when we des describe Bhagavan, means one who possesses opulences, and these are the six opulences of Bhagavan. Right. Everyone should know these six opulences. Wealth, strength, beauty, fame, knowledge and renunciation. So the gopis of Vrindavan are so fortunate that they can see and think of Krishna all day, every day. The gopis of Vrindavan are doing many different duties every day, but they're always thinking of Krishna. 
กูปีที่เป็นดาวันเนี่ยก็ทํางานทําหน้าที่เนี่ยหลายอย่างด้วยกันทั้งวันแต่ว่าเขาเนี่ยมีความคิดถึงกุศลอยู่เสมอ They have to milk the cows and they have to churn the butter. They have to clean their houses. They have to wash their floors. But they're always remembering Krishna and they're always chanting his holy name. They never forget to chant Krishna's names, whatever they're doing. So the gopis give us a perfect example of how to be Krishna conscious. Even though we have to do many different duties, we can still be Krishna conscious. And if we're always thinking of Krishna, then we will not be affected by the material energy. So the gopis are they're in they're in trance they're in samadhi which is the perfection of yoga. Krishna describes in the Bhagavad Gita. That one who always thinks of Krishna, he is the best yogi. He is the highest of all yogis. So one lady, the ladies are watching the wrestling match. They're talking to each other. One lady said to the other. We should accept the activities of the gopis to be the highest. They're the most pious. They must be the most pious because they are able to see Krishna. Every morning and every evening. They see him in the morning when he goes to the forest, taking the cows and going with the cowherd boys. They go into the forest. And they see him in the evening when he comes home. He's playing on his flute. He's smiling, very brilliant, very effulgent. So this way, the ladies in the audience they were talking about Krishna and Balaram. So Lord Krishna is the super soul in the heart of all living entities. So he could understand what the ladies in the audience were saying. So he understood that these ladies were very. He understood the audience, the ladies. You know, they were they were very anxious about Krishna. Because they thought, how can Krishna and Balaram be expected to fight these big, huge, giant men who are like stone? 
ราก็คิดกันว่าคริสนากับบาลารามเด็กหนุ่มน้อยเนี่ยจะสามารถต่อสู้กับนักมวยปั้มมืออาชีพที่ตัวใหญ่เหมือนก้อนหินแบบนี้ได้ยังไง So when Krishna saw the ladies were worried about him, he decided that he would just kill the wrestlers immediately. In the beginning, he was wrestling, and he was enjoying wrestling, having some fun. But now he decided, okay, and I had enough wrestling. Now I should kill them. So the parents of Krishna and Balaram were also there, and they were also anxious. Nanda Maharaj, Mother Yashoda, Vasudev, and Devaki, they were all anxious. Because by the influence of Yoga Maya, they didn't think about the strength of. Krishna and Balaram. They just thought they're our children, and they didn't think that they're that they were very powerful or very strong. So Lord Krishna was fighting. With Chanura, and Balaram was fighting with Mustika. So Krishna began to hit Chanura, and he hit him, and it was very painful for the Chanura, and his bones were breaking because Krishna was hitting him, and so he was feeling so much pain. Krishna hit him three times with his fist. So although Chanura has a body like stone, he was shaken and he was feeling the pain. Oh, it was so painful. We thought, oh, this boy is going to beat me. He's going to defeat me. So then Chanura decided that this is my last chance, and Krishna. And then Chanura, Chanura decided, thought this is my last chance, and he tried to attack Krishna. And he folded his two hands together, and with his two hands, he began to hit the chest of Krishna. But it didn't even it didn't disturb Krishna at all. Krishna wasn't shaken at all. Just like if you have a flower garland and you hit an elephant, it doesn't make any difference to the elephant. The elephant's got such a big body; he doesn't feel a flower garland hitting him. So then, so then Krishna caught hold of the two hands of Chanura, and he whirled around. He whirled around, and then he threw him. Krishna 
ครับชาโนราเนี่ยมาเวียงไปรอบๆเวียงไปรอบๆแล้วก็โยนทิ้งไป Krishna threw him to the ground and Chanura died, lost his life. Just like when you have a festival, then they they have a flag. They have a, they have a, often they put the flag of Indra. Whenever there's a festival, they have the flag of Indra. And so it said, Chanura. He fell just like the flag when it falls down. And all of his ornaments, which he was wearing, they were all scattered as he fell to the ground. So Mustika was fighting with Balara, and Mustika was he hit Balara. But when he hit Balaram, Balaram hit him back with a great force. But he gave a powerful punch. And Mustika, being hit by Balaram, he began to tremble and he vomited blood. And then he fell down dead, just like a tree falls down in a hurricane. So after the two wrestlers were killed, then another wrestler. Named Kuta King. These were all professional wrestlers who were employed by King Kamsa. Kamsa had brought these wrestlers here with the intention that they would kill Krishna and Balaram. So this wrestler named Kuta came. Lord Balaram immediately caught him with his left hand. And Lord Balaram killed him very easily. And then another wrestler named Shala came, and Krishna cracked his head when he kicked him. And then there was another wrestler named Toshala, and he came. And he was killed in the same way. So some of the wrestlers were killed by the the fists of Krishna and Balaram, and some were killed by the kick of Krishna and Balaram. So these were the main wrestlers. Then when they were all when they were killed, that was five wrestlers they killed. When these five main wrestlers were killed, all the other wrestlers they just ran away because they thought we will never we will also be killed. They were much better wrestlers than us, so they all ran to save their life. 
นักมวยปั้มห้าคนที่ถูกฆ่าไปแล้วเนี่ยนักมวยปั้มคนอื่นๆที่รออยู่เนี่ยก็รู้สึกว่าไม่รอดแม่ถ้าเกิดว่าอยู่เขาก็เลยรีบวิ่งหนีไปบอกว่าโอ้คนเก่งแบบนี้ยังต้องยังตายเลยพวกเรานี่ยังพวกเราต้องไม่รอดแม่เขาก็เลยวิ่ง So the cowherd boys and Krishna and Balaram, they all came together. The cowherd, all the cowherd men from Vrindavan, they all came to congratulate Krishna and Balaram. And they, be, they began to celebrate. They had like a festival. And people were beating the drums, and other people were blowing trumpets. And Krishna and Balaram's ankle bells were tinkling, nice sweet sounds. Just like when there's when there's a competition, maybe there's a boxing match, a boxing match or football match. So when one side wins and beats the other side, then the side who win, then they all celebrate. เหมือนกับการแข่งขันแม้ว่าจะเป็นฟุตบอลหรือว่าการแข่งขันกีฬาประเภทอะไรก็แล้วแต่เวลาจะมีสองทีมแล้วฝั่งไหนชนะก็แล้วแต่เนี่ยก็จะมีพวกของกองเชียร์ก็จะตีกองแล้วก็ทำเสียงทำเพื่อเป็นการแสดงอาการดีใจ So the same way Krishna and Balaram and all the cowherd boys from Vrindavan they were all celebrating that we're the winners we won แล้วเหมือนกัน Krishna and Balaram แล้วพวกเด็กเลี้ยงวัวที่มาด้วยกันเนี่ยก็รู้สึกว่าชนะแล้วก็ยินดีกับชัยชนะที่ Krishna สมดุล And there were many people all gathered in the arena what, to watch the wrestling match, and everyone was happy and they were clapping. They were feel, they, all the people were feeling they were ecstatic. They, it was so, they were so happy to see Krishna and Balaram win and defeat these big wrestlers. And there were brahmanas there also, and the brahmanas also praised Krishna and Balaram in ecstasy. But Kamsa was not happy. He was very upset. He didn't clap, and he didn't give any blessing to Krishna and Balaram. And Kamsa got angry at them playing the drums and blowing the trumpets. He said, "Stop it! Stop it!" He didn't like that Krishna had won. And he was really sorry that all of his wrestlers had been killed and others had run away. So after he told the band to stop playing, then he gave instructions to all of his servants. Because Kamsa was a king of Mathura. So he was surrounded by all the ministers and all his different servants. They were all around him, waiting for orders from him. So, Kamsa told them. He gave instructions to them. He said, "I order 
these two sons of Vasudev, meaning Krishna and Balaram, you should, he said you should get them, drive them out of Mathura. They cannot stay in Mathura. And those cowherd boys who have come with them, all those cowherd boys from Vrindavan, you should take all of their wealth, take all of the riches away from them. And Nanda Maharaj, the father of Krishna, he should be immediately arrested and killed. He's done, he's been very cunning, he's behaved in very cunning ways, so he should be killed. And you should also kill that rascal Vasudev immediately. They've cheat, they cheated me. Because Vasudev took the child when Krishna was born, he brought that child to a home of Nanda Maharaj. So Kamsa was waiting to kill Krishna, but Vasudev took him to Nanda Maharaj's home. So Kamsa said, the Nanda, Nanda and Vasudev, they should both be killed immediately. And he said, you can also kill my father, Ugrasen. Because Ugrasen always supported my enemies. He never supported me. He's always against me. So he should be killed. So this was very heavy words Kamsa was saying to kill all these wonderful devotees of Lord Krishna. Take away the wealth of all the cowherd boys and kill Vasudev and Nanda Maharaj. Wow, oh, Kamsa is so nasty. So when Krishna heard this, he was very upset. So Krishna became very angry with him and he immediately he jumped up to the dais where King Kamsa was sitting. So Kamsa, he was, he knew that this Krishna is going to cause his death. So Kamsa was prepared for Krishna to attack him. So Kamsa immediately pulled out his sword and he began to chat fight Krishna. He wanted to challenge Krishna. He had his sword and he had a shield. He was trying to kill Krishna. But Krishna just caught hold of him. Krishna caught him by the hair and pulled him down. Hmm. Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. 
He is the shelter of the whole material creation. And the, the whole creation comes from his lotus navel. So although Kamsa, Kamsa pulled out his sword and he was trying to fight Krishna, Krishna just knocked off the crown of the head of Kamsa and grabbed his long hair. So Krishna then dragged him by the hair. He dragged him from his big dais. He threw him down into the wrestling arena. And then Krishna jumped on his chest and began to beat him again and again. And so when Krishna was beating him, Kamsa lost his life, he died. Everyone was very afraid of Kamsa because Kamsa was very powerful. So Krishna wanted to make sure that everybody knew that Kamsa was dead. So Krishna dragged him. Just like sometimes a lion will fight an elephant and usually the lion will kill the elephant and after it kills the elephant then it will drag the elephant. So people at first they thought Kamsa was just unconscious, but then when Krishna dragged him, then they could understand he was actually dead. So those people who were followers of Kamsa, they cried in lamentation. But the other people who were not followers of Kamsa, they rejoiced, they were very happy. They thought, oh, at last the demon is dead. So Kamsa, he had heard that this eighth son of Devaki was going to kill him. So he was always thinking about Krishna, that Krishna is going to come, it's going to kill me. So he was afraid, Kamsa was very afraid of his death, so he was always thinking of Krishna. He was thinking that Krishna is going to come and kill me one day. So it didn't matter what Kamsa did, he, was, he couldn't forget Krishna, he was thinking of him 24 hours a day. When he would eat, when he would walk, even when he was breathing, he, he would think of Krishna. Uh, 
So when Krishna killed him, he got liberated. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Yam Yam Vapismarambavam Chajate Anti Kalevaram Tam Tam Evaitikunti A Sadatat Bhava Bhavitaha. Whatever we remember at the time of death, then we will go to that state in the next life. So the next life depends on what we are thinking in this life. So Kamsa was thinking of Krishna carrying the Sudarshan Chakra, carrying his wheel, the Sudarshan Chakra in his hands. And that means Narayan, that's the form of Lord Narayan. The form of Narayan, he carries the Sudarshan Chakra and he carries the conch shell and he carries the lotus flower and a club. So the Acharyas tell us that when Kamsa died, he got liberation. And he got the special liberation where you get the same form as Lord Narayan. It's called Sarupya Mukti. Right. There, there are five different kinds of liberation. So four are acceptable for devotional service. And the other one is for the Mayavadis. So Kamsa got the form like Lord Narayan in the spiritual world. So he went to the Vaikuntha planets and all the, all the people there have the same features as Narayan. So we should understand that even if a person thinks of Krishna as an enemy, he can get liberation. Or he may get he may get a place in the Vaikuntha planets. So that is for even for demon. But if one is a devotee, then you can be sure you'll get a much better place. Right. The impersonalists, they go in the Brahma Jyoti, in the impersonal Brahman. And the demons who are, the demons who are killed by Krishna, they also go in the Brahma Jyoti. But Kamsa was a special demon because he was always thinking thinking of Krishna. So he got into the spiritual world. 
So anybody who thinks of Krishna as an enemy or a friend, they will get liberation. But the, the devotee will get a better liberation than the demon. The demons or those who are enemies of Krishna, they will get the Sayuja Mukti. They will go into the Brahman, the impersonal liberation. And sometimes, some rare de demons, some rare enemies of Krishna, they may get liberation where they get the body like Krishna. Just like Putana, she got to go to the spiritual world to be Krishna's nurse. Okay, but jet, most of the demons who are killed by Krishna, they go into the impersonal Brahma Jyoti. So when Kamsa was killed, he had eight brothers, all younger brothers. He was the oldest of the brothers, he was in the oldest son, and he had eight younger brothers. And they all, when they heard their oldest brother had been killed, they all came to fight, with, to find out what happened, and they were ready to kill Krishna and Balaram. So Kamsa and his brothers were all Krishna's uncles. They were the brothers of Krishna's mother, Devaki. So when Krishna killed Kamsa, he killed his uncle. So this is not proper according to the Vedas. In the Vedas, you're not supposed to kill any family member. But, but Krishna, he doesn't have to follow all these Vedic rules. And this was a special case because Kamsa couldn't be killed by anyone else, only by Krishna. So, so Krishna killed Kamsa himself. But Kam, when Kamsa's eight brothers all came, then Balaram killed them. Be Balaram's mother is Rohini and she's not related to Kamsa. So Balaram could kill all the eight brothers of Kamsa and he did that. He took his club or maybe he took his elephant tusk. When they killed the elephant, they had a big tusk. And so Balaram used that to kill the eight brothers, one after another.
So it said Balaram killed them, just like a lion kills a flock of deer. So Krishna and Balaram show that when Krishna comes, he comes to deliver the pious and to kill the demons who are always enemies of the demigods. So the demigods in the higher planets, they were very pleased and they threw flowers on Krishna and Balaram. Everyone was very happy. All the wives of the demigods were in ecstasy. But the wives of Kamsa and the eight brothers who had been killed, they were all very they were crying because all the husbands had been killed. So they cried and they embraced the body, the dead bodies of their husbands. And they said to their dead husbands, they said, you were so kind, you were protecting all your family, now you're dead, we are also dead. But then they said, you treated persons you gave trouble to people who had no fault. So this is your karma. You've been killed because you, would give, you were giving trouble to people who had, no, who had not done any harm to anyone. So by the law of nature, you have been killed because you gave suf you brought suffering to innocent people, so you got punished for that. And anybody who neglects the authority of Lord Krishna, they'll never be happy, and you ha they'll have to die. So these these ladies, they were the widows, they become widows, they were the wives, they were like Krishna's aunts. So Krishna was kind to them. So they performed the ceremony, they did all the rituals for the dead kings who had been for Kamsa and all the brothers of Kamsa, they did all the rituals which they do after somebody dies. And then Krishna and Balaram brought Vasudeva and Devaki out from the prison house of Kamsa. And Krishna and Balaram fell at the feet of Vasudeva and Devaki and offered prayers. So Krishna knew that Vasudeva and Devaki had suffered a lot. They'd been put in prison and they'd suffered a lot because of Lord Krishna. So Krishna 
touched their feet and offered them obeisances. But Vasudeva and Devaki, they didn't embrace Krishna. Because they 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 saw him, they they were thinking that he is the supreme personality of Godhead. Although he was born as their son, they knew he was actually God. So Vasudeva and Devaki were always remembering Krishna's position. Okay, that's the end of the chapter. Are there any questions? Uh, yes, Guru Maharaj, there was one question from Purnamasi Mataji. She texted me to ask you. She, uh, her question is, when we do something for the person that is uh, the, the person who passed away, will they get the benefit? Will they get the benefit? Yes, when we do some uh, good thing for the pious activity and we name them or the spiritual activity. She, she is giving example of herself. Yeah. Now whatever the activity she did, she always give to Ramshon Prabhuji name also. She put Prabhuji name also in there. Who's, so whose name? Will he get some benefit out of it. Whose name? Uh, Ram Lakshman Prabhu. Oh, oh, oh. Hi, oh. hi. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. So, yes. Yes, if we have to do these rituals, they're important. And, you know, we have, we want to bring Ram Lakshman's ashes to India to put in the Ganga as soon as we get the chance. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's important to do last rites after a person leaves the body. We want to do last rites to help him for the next birth. Okay. Yeah, we have to do these things. That there, there, there's different rituals. You see, there's special rituals for devotees. And there's rituals for karmis, but there's special special prayers which we offer for the devotees. And usually, in honor, there's special. You have to. You, there's a special uh, offering which is made. For on the on the behalf of a departed soul, one is done like one one week after he departs, and then another is done after one month, and then one is done after one year. The, so after one year, that's also the important one. One year after he departs, you know, on the actual day of his departure, one year after, we have to observe a special function in his honor. I was up in, uh
I'm regularly doing these things for people, for our devotees in other parts of the world. You know, if somebody dies, we'll do things like we'll arrange prasadam distribution in honor of that devotee. The other day we distributed prasadam to 300 brahmacharis in honor of a devotee. Oh, and at that time we'd get all the brahmacharis to chant the holy name in honor of that devotee. So if you get the blessings of a devotee, if you get the blessings of devotees, it's very powerful. Yes. Okay. Okay, thank you. Now we have uh, Shaya Madaji. Krishna ตัวมีเรื่องไม่สบายใจหรือว่าเราซัฟเฟอร์จากโลกวัตถุอ่ะเราก็จะมีการลองอ่าปัญหาหนูไม่ค่อยเข้าใจอารมณ์ของการที่เราลองให้ด้วยความรู้จักโลกวัตถุมันแตกต่างจากอารมณ์ที่เราลองให้โดยการคิดถึงพระช
shedding tears is a, 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 that is one of the that can be a, ecstatic emotions due to love of Krishna. But ordinary people, they love their body and they cry for their body. One man, one man used to come to the temple, he used to tell me, he said, you know, he said, I can cry for my money, I cry for my business, I cry for my family, I can cry for my home, but I cannot cry for Krishna. So we want to cry for Krishna. Our Krishna consciousness movement is training devotees that one, one day we will cry for Krishna. We will say, oh Krishna, where are you? Krishna, when are you coming? Krishna, where are you? Then we want to see Krishna so badly that tears are coming from the eyes. Can you cry for Krishna? Not yet. One day you may one day you may cry for Krishna. Um Yes, I ever been to cry to Krishna. Um but someone um uh, tell me about um he asked uh he cried to Radharani. Um I just feeling crying uh to Radharani few days ago. Then I I need to ask you how uh, different about that we crying for Krishna or we crying for Radharani. Um is in my mind it is different but I, I need you to explain about about this mood, Guru Maharaj. Well we don't hear crying for Radharani. We hear crying for Krishna. Our the position of the devotee is to give service to Radharani. Radharani, she is crying for Krishna. She is feeling separation from Krishna. So we should try to follow the mood of Radharani. We want to cultivate her mood. She cries for Krishna. You don't we don't hear anybody say they cry for Radharani. This is not the philosophy. We're following the mood of the gopis. 
The mood of the gopis is to feel separation from Krishna. The gopis don't feel separation from Radharani. Radharani is with the gopis. She's one of the gopis. So they don't feel separation from Radharani. But we want to follow the mood of Radharani and the mood of the gopis and feel separation from Krishna. <laughs> You never read anywhere in our books about feeling separation from Radharani. You should try to follow the books. Don't just invent things on your own. Yes, Guru Maharaj, but I, I got some video from from the Wodi about um one Baba from Vindavan. Um there's someone asking him about why we cry to Radharani, but he crying but he he didn't reply directly. Then I don't understand about that. Then I asked you, Guru Maharaj. Well, you be careful about watching ba videos about Babas from Vrindavan because you don't know if they're, what they're teaching. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, I, I understand. Yes. Thank you for your advice. There are so many people in Vrindavan and they're, they're not all teaching the same thing. You want to follow in the line of the disciplic succession, the parampara. Don't just think everybody in Vrindavan is great, everybody in Vrindavan is good. There are many different people in Vrindavan. They all can be teaching different things. You should be very careful. Okay, Guru Maharaj, I will follow Guru Parampara. Thank you for your advice, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay, your next question from Yogita Mataji. Hare Krishna, Gurudev. Please make some humble obeisances. Gurudev, uh, just now when you were telling us to pass time, you were telling us that when Lord Krishna arrived in Mathura, they were admiring his face. And they found him so young to be, so delicate to be fighting with Chandra and Mushtika. On the other hand, they could also, they, they consider him to be the Lord. It's really a, you know, it's contradiction. I mean, they knew that Lord Krishna was the Lord already, or did they, I mean, how did they know exactly? Did they already know that he was the Lord in Mathura? Okay. Come from Mother Jiga, Tondi, Pognang, Ying Sauti Mathura, and the Chin Chong. Uh, well, they see him in different ways. Sometimes Lord Krishna covers himself by yoga maya so that they don't see him as the Lord.
Anyway, we see Vasudev and Devaki. Vasudev and Devaki, when they came out of prison from Kamsa's jail, they could understand Krishna was the Lord. Because they just seen, they saw him kill Kamsa. They just heard, they they they'd heard how he killed Kamsa, so they know he must have been very very. He must have been the Lord. Nobody else could kill Kamsa. So the ladies of Mathura, they, were, they had heard about Krishna when they were watching him. But then they saw Krishna kill the, these wrestlers, then they could understand he is the Lord. So sometimes he covers himself and sometimes he reveals himself. Mm -hmm. So can we say that is the difference between Mathura and Vindavan? Vindavan, he always covers himself. In Mathura, he partly reveals himself as a lord. Can we say that way, Gurudev? Well, I don't know about that, because sometimes Krishna reveals himself also in Vrindavan. Ah, uh, yeah. Yashodamai, his mouth. Right. Mm. Okay, Gurudev. He's got it. Thank you. Okay, any more questions, Archana? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Uh, from Vaishnavi Madhati, maybe we can take this as the last question. Okay. Mm Hare -hmm. Krishna, Guru Maharaj. My humble obeisances, all glory to Srila Prabhupada. I was thinking, Kamsa is thinking Krishna is the enemy and he's thinking all the time, 24 hours. I was thinking like, is it uh, because when we have an enemy or somebody does something to us, we always think like about that person, right? Even now in our practical life, if somebody does something bad and we, our mind doesn't stop and we keep thinking. Is it like uh, we can think uh, enemy? It's more easier to think of an enemy. Is it, is it like that, Guru Maharaj? And how can we also think uh, about Krishna 24 hours, uh, like some tips? Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Yes, well, some people, they were some enemies of Krishna like that. They were, their absorption in Krishna was not, was not favorable to pure devotional service, just like Kamsa. Although he was thinking of Krishna, he was thinking about killing Krishna, so he was the enemy of Krishna. But there were other demons, they were just demons, they never thought of Krishna. And so it's not, it was, a, it was a very special case, you know, Kamsa was very special. Kamsa had been killed in previous life also by Lord Vishnu. In previous life Kamsa was Kalanimi and he'd been killed by Lord Vishnu. So then he came again as Kamsa and was told that Krishna is going to kill him. And so he was always thinking. So Sishupal also was always thinking. Sishupal was always envious of Krishna. And Sishupal also got liberated. But we're not encouraged to follow that mood of being enemy or to be envious. We, we don't want to follow these demons. These were very special demons. We got very special mercy from Krishna. But we're encouraged to practice pure devotional service favorably, to do devotional service favorably, not unfavorably. 
We don't want to be like Kamsa or Sishupal. We want to follow the pure devotees, follow in the footsteps of the pure devotees.เอ่อแล้วอันนี้เนี่ยคําสอนเนี่ยคือคิดถึงกฤษณะในรูปของมาอันนั้นในแบบว่าผู้ต่อสู้อะไรอย่างนี้แล้วเค้าก็ได้ร